Festival icon Charlotte Mania Mania Mateke was launched last month in Freedom Park titled Beauty of the Heart, the life and times of Charlotte Mania Mateke and authored by journalist Ubeda Jaffa. The book chronicles the life of the late struggle icon. Mateke helped to organize anti-pass movement in 1913 and later in 1918. She founded the Bantu Women's League of the SANNC paving the way for ANC Women's League. For more on this, we are now joined in studio by author Zubeda Jaffa. Zubeda, an amazing, amazing book. You've written various books um, on trial with uh, Nelson Mandela. Now this book and the title, just take us through that. You know, uh, on uh, Beauty of the Heart is um, something which Charlotte talks about. Mm -hmm. And when, when I read that speech, um, I, it just hit me, you know, because she talks about the importance of, of beauty of the heart mm -hmm. and, you know, we treating each other, you know, well, speaking properly, not being so unkind. Well, the things we are seeing today, mm -hmm. you know, in the world, but also amongst us, we just say the first thing that comes into our head and so she gives this whole speech where she, where she actually says, especially she speaks especially to the women, and she says that we must be dignified and we must be the leaders. We, if we want to be leaders, then we've got to, you know, be, be uh, upright. And it just struck me immediately that this was the title. Mm. And uh, in the academic world at the university, um, it was a bit difficult for them to to deal with this title mm. because they called it a soft title mm -hmm. and you know the hard title is the life and times of Charlotte Mania mm. Makreke. Mm. So now the design of the book cover take us through the concept behind it we were just chatting before going on air and you, you mentioned the fact that some of these photos that were used in the book which you only have rights to use in the book presently there's only 24 and uh, it's uh, what been 125 years yes. before they were used yes. can you just take us through the concept the, of the, the book this the is book this photograph here is the first time we see this mm. in 125 years mm. and um we've only gotten permission to use it in the book for 10 years if I do another version of the book, I can't use it. I have to pay again, or the university has to pay again. Mm. The university uh, paid for, p bought five of the yeah. pictures, uh, Charlotte, her sister, and others. Mm. But, um, but there are 24 pictures of the whole choir that mm. went to Britain. Mm. And those pictures are there. And I don't see any reason why those pictures shouldn't come home after 125 years. Mm. Why should we pay all this money for these mm. pictures? Why should some private company in Britain make a whole lot of money? You How know? did they get those rights to the pictures? How I did actually, they get those pictures? I actually don't know the whole story. Mm. And so, uh, you know, I just wanted to get the pictures, that's yes. all. Mm. I didn't want to have a fight about, mm. you, you know, we did bring them down a lot in terms okay. of the price. Mm -hmm. but, um, but this is something that has to be done. And I hope that there's somebody will help me to do this because I, I really, I really don't have too much energy to to take this on. Mm. Now, what is the hardest thing to write about this book? The hardest part. The of it? hardest thing mm. was the fact that you know Charlotte, uh, my Charlotte was born in 1871, and she died in 1939, mm. and this was you know long before you know she she lived a life during those sort of tough days of colonialism, mm. you know. Uh, apartheid proper she didn't see, you know, the National Party she didn't see in 1948. Mm. But she did experience the, the taking away of the land in 1913. Mm. She mm. did experience the imposing of past laws on women mm. in the free state. And that was on, on, on African, on, on Af I don't even know what terms to use, black and colored women. Mm. Uh, and they banded together and they fought against that. Mm. And uh, she led deputations, you know, to, to, to oppose it. So um, what, was, uh, what was very, very difficult for me was to get all the different elements of the story mm -hmm. because nobody was alive. She had, she had um, 
a, a child mm -hmm. who died when he was four years old. Mm -hmm. So there were no direct descendants, okay. even though the family was wonderful, very helpful, very supportive. But they didn't, it would have been different if they were children and grandchildren. Mm. You know? How long did it take you to write this book? Oh, it, is, it was close to three years, mm. well, for the whole process. Mm -hmm. And it was nail biting mm. because, you know, to, to, to verify mm. the facts, because there were all sorts of different facts on the, on the, um, on the internet, mm. conflicting facts. Mm -hmm. And so I had to sort of do my own research and we had to translate documents and we had to go through. I had students helping me and mm. they were fantastic. Mm. And we had to look at all the old newspapers and, mm. you know. Mm. But I think her voice comes through in all of this and that makes me very happy at the moment. Very happy. I was just going to touch on the emotions that uh, were invoked for you, yourself, and the students that assisted you in, in putting together this bu book, uh, Beauty of the Heart. The feeling right now, or the feeling when the first copy was handed to you, just take us through, take us through that moment. You know, it was... It was um I've just been overwhelmed by this mm. because there's something about it, you know, uh, yeah. she was our first graduate and that female graduate, she's a BSc graduate mm -hmm. in the US and this, this is a story about how she struggled to get there, mm. you know, mm. and that for me is the most significant part of the story, uh, how she got to eventually graduate in 1901, mm. that's for me, that is the story. Uh, the, the, the essence of the story. Mm. Of course, other things are also very yes. important. Mm. But, but that for me uh, shows her personal courage. Uh, mm. as somebody said the other day she showed true grit, you know. She, mm. When everybody else was sort of buckling, um, when, when the colonial authorities were stopping putting boulders in the way mm. of the education train, mm. they, she pushed ahead. And what this also showed me is that all those years ago we had a substantial group of people like Saul Plaiki and Pixley Kaseme, all of mm. them, who had made enormous advances mm. uh, to take us forward, building schools mm. and, you know, <coughs> all this. And if we, they'd have been allowed to proceed, mm. we would have been much further. Mm. Now this has as you mentioned it took you almost three years to put together to write this this book what are you currently working on is there anything or <laughs> are you going to take a bit of a break or a sort of a hiatus i'm hoping to take a break but at the moment what we're trying to do is to um sort of categorize the information mm -hmm. and put it onto uh, my website mm -hmm. so that look if you want to reach the f read the full speech mm -hmm. Uh, there are a couple of speeches in here, which mm. I mean, that I find the most amazing that I could find speeches that she'd written. Mm. And so we want to put it onto a website so that yeah. everybody can they see have it. Have access to and it. And quite a number of the documents that I used, I want to put it onto a, you know, make it public information. Mm. Okay. Where do we find the book? And, uh, you know, is it is going to be stocked at the major uh, bookstores and, and so on? Just well, you know, we've, we've, we've made this uh, poster which gives oh. the full details. Okay. And um, it's her. It's probably at all the, it is at the major bookstores, okay. but people can also go. We've created a website called beautyoftheheart.co.za mm -hmm. and people can go directly there. Um, and order it and uh, yeah you know it's up to them now because I can do all this work yes and it can stay in sort of you know in the walls of and uh, gather dust mm. or if it's up to each you know member of the public now mm. to make the story live has ha have the book has the book hit the shelves yet or is it yet to come to go to be found at bookstores? What's the it situation there? It has hit the shelves, okay. not to the extent that I would like to, but okay. um, I've had discussions with some people mm -hmm. at various stores, individual mm -hmm. stores, mm -hmm. and they are going to be coming to the party in the next few days. So, But it's taken me, my efforts, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to say to them, look, this is our story, this is one mm -hmm. of our stories, mm -hmm. and we should not be going into bookshops and seeing that the story is on the African biography section at the mm. back of the shop. Mm. We should have European fiction and American fiction and whatever, 
but this is our stories. Our, our shops should be South African shops mm. with mm. South African literature, and, and there's lots, mm -hmm. and African literature, mm. but um, we can't forever be, you know, sort of just be relegated to second place. To the back shelves. Now, tell us about the award that you've won recently. Oh, I'm Your award as, 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 as an author and journalist. I've won many awards. Yes. You're talking about the, the this, most recent one. Oh, this one is tomorrow night, actually. Yes. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it's about. Okay. I, I just uh, was sent a letter to say that I will be given this award mm. tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, and the organization is the Congress of Business and Economics. Okay. And it seems it's a non-racial group of business people mm. in the Johannesburg area mm -hmm. that seeks to build bridges. And so yes. they've decided for some reason to celebrate <laughs> heroes and the ama amazing work that you do. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Zubeda, advice for authors who are up and coming or, um, you know, journalists who are thinking of going in that direction, what advice would you have for them? I would say that you must be passionate about journalism. Mm. This, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy business, mm. especially now also, but it's never been easy. No. But if you love people and you're interested, you know, you're genuinely interested in people, then this is the job for you, mm. you know. Mm. And the writing and the skill side of it, you have to practice and practice and practice, mm. you know. Mm. And if you're not interested in doing that, if you want to, then, then you're just going to be mediocre or you're going to be frustrated. Mm. But this kind of work, it's, uh, it's, it's art. Mm. So you've got to put in the, the energy. And, you know, this book nearly killed me. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do something very soon again. <laughs> <laughs> With the number of awards that you've won over the years and the work that you've done, yes. I mean, there's, there's a lot for young journalists to learn from you. Yes. And uh, we can't have this book um, be the end of you it, it, no, with, no, with the, a lot of work that it, uh, amount of time that it's taken yes. from you Zubeda thank you so much for joining us and all the best for tomorrow and we look forward to finding out exactly what the what award it is, it is yes. um, you're going to be receiving tomorrow but thank you so much for this book and this is history um, yes, and indeed, uh, indeed. you know um, uh, message to the young people who must go out and get the, this book well, I've dedicated the book to all young women of South Africa, mm. if you look inside. And yeah. the reason why I've done that is for them to, to take courage that, you know, somebody so long ago, you know, went out there and she enjoyed herself. She was singing, you know, mm. she was a singer, mm. but she was determined mm. to be educated and to come back mm. uh, to her father's village and, and educate the people there. Mm. And that was the first thing that she did. She came back and she started a night school for the herd boys. Mm. Mm. Now, you know, that relationship with those of us who are educated, we're privileged. Yes. I'm privileged, mm. you know, I'm a privileged individual. I know mm. that. Mm. And so what is my role in society? What mm. is it that I should be doing? Mm. Um, I can't be sort of, you know, just wearing myself thin, mm. but I must know that I'm privileged. Mm. And that also that I stand on the backs of many other people. Mm. And so I must carry that carefully. Mm. You know, really mm. carefully. Mm. I mustn't think that I'm a most important, you know, very important peanut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Zubeda, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to getting into the book. I know uh, Tabile and myself will definitely be going to the shops to get us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you all so the best. much, Lulu. Right. Thanks for having me. That was author Zubeda Jaffa joining us live in studio.